book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 14 is where we are now. And we understand to keep us up to date that the situation is that a lot of the church members have no respect for Paul and the teaching of the gospel. Keep in mind that God has given Paul the message for the new church, for the church. And because of the, the city of Corinth is a place, as we've discovered, uh, this is a highly educated area. It, it's, it's a wealthy area. It has a lot of influence because of this location. It has influence coming from all over the world, different cultures that are set up in the neighborhood and the community. And they have an influence on everyone there. Just like being here in Warren County or where you live, uh, your neighborhood is influenced by the things that go on in. You know, if you're in Warren County, Halifax County, you, you're considered one of the poorest counties in the state, the tier one county. <coughs> because North of Warren County used to be the richest county in the state at one time, back in 1850. But that was on the slave trade, when they had that free labor. Got rid of the free labor, he took away the financial success. And being identified, like this world system identifies us, we consider the poorest people, right? So we live like we're the poorest people. We expect everything for free, right? Little bypass pants, they call us $30. You say, my God, that's too high. No matter what it is, you buy in this area, you go buy it somewhere, you can say it's too high. What are you going to look for a cheaper price? That's the truth. See, that's part of thinking. That's what the enemy brought into our minds. That's why we can't grasp all that God has for us. And that mindset is coming to the church. And the church has a poverty mindset. It's constantly begging for money, constantly trying to hold on to the money they have. And the people that are in the church are the same way. They have, they're afraid to lose what they got, they're always trying to get more. See, that's a poverty mindset. That is creeping into the church today here. And because of that mindset, everybody today is trying to figure out how to pay for Jesus. Yeah. How are we going to get that money today? How are we going to name it and claim it? Some people are suing their rent money today or their light bill money or water bill money because they believe that if they tithe, God's going to bless them. That's a poverty mind. That's that you can't give God. He said, if you obey me, I'll bless everything you put your hands in. That'll be tithe. See, that's buying God. But when I talk to the average person today, they say, look, they say, I'm being blessed. How are you being blessed? Well, I pay my tithes. Really? Well, how are you being blessed? I just got a new car. Yeah, me and my girlfriend, we need a girl. Yeah, we shacked We got a new car, got a nice home. And God's blessing that. Do you ever look at this book to see what he has to say about that? So we're in the book of Corinth, and they come in with this gibberish called the tongue. And Paul is now bringing into order the things of God. As we realize, when he uses the word tongue in the singular, he's talking about the counterfeit gibberish. When he's talking about the tongues of the book of Acts, he always uses plural. Because tongues, many languages, right? Tongue is described as an unknown language of angels. And as we discussed, it was unknown, how did you get it? If you don't know it, how can you interpret it? You understand how if your mind's not open, you can't think clearly? Amen. Yeah. It's unknown. Amen. There's no such thing as an unknown language, because if it's unknown, it can't be a language, Amen. right? Yeah. Every time you see God speaking the Bible, what language does he use? The language of the people he's talking to, right? Whenever an angel shows up and talks, what language do they use? The language of the people, right? Have you ever heard an angel speaking the Bible and use angelic language? They're not very good, right? It's not there, is it? So where did it come from? You can't interpret what's not understood. So Paul has come on the scene, and he's trying to get this thing clear. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, uh, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols however you will live. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is a curse, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts. Pay attention now. Would you really pay attention? 
God is getting ready to give you the instructions on the gifts, the different gifts, right? He says, now there are gifts, but the, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now there are varieties of ministries, and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons, right? But, pay attention, but to each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another one the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, plural, and to another the interpretation of tongues, plural, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributed to each one individually, just as he wills. Now, he's just giving you instructions on tongues and the gifts, right? The gifts, right? Listen to that. What do you come away with when it comes to the spiritual gifts? It works with one spirit. <clears throat> they are given by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the one that ignites them, right? Mm -hmm. That means that whenever you see a gift of God in action, the Holy Spirit initiated. What does the person have to do in that situation? What what part do the person play? Does the person play that he's working through? Except the Holy Spirit. Just like this pen, right? You see, this is called an ink pen. Of course, we all know this. We call this an ink pen, right? I put it in my pocket. I decide I want to write a letter, right? What role does the pen play? The writing. The I want to write a letter. Write a letter. Okay. Ink part. Yeah, it's a two. It's a two. So how is that pen going to write a letter? Your hands. I have to reach in my pocket and write a letter, right? Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that activates the gift. And if he wants someone to speak in tongues today, who's going to do it? Which one of y'all he going to use? That's a gift. Huh? Well, how do you know who has to give? It'll be used properly. Um, Say what? It'll be used properly. Okay, let's stop and think about it. I want to write a letter, right? I said, look, y'all, I'm getting ready to write a letter. Then you see me do this right here, right? I, I do this. Now what do you what do you say? What do you what are you thinking now? Need some paper. Say so what? Need some paper. He's about to write a letter, why? He said he was going to write a letter. I saw him pull the pen out of his pocket. And what the pen she used to do? Right. Write with, right? So then I go over here and you see me get a piece of paper. What are you thinking now? He's definitely getting ready to write right now, right? It looks like it, right? Why? He said he was going to write it. He has a pen in his hand. And through your reasoning, your intellect, by what you've been trained, it looks like he's getting ready to do what he said, right? So then you see me. What am I doing? Thank you. It seems like I'm writing. You won't know it till I show it. Show it to you. You would have to see some evidence, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Now let's bring this back to the gifts. Let's say the Holy Spirit is moving in this place today. He wants somebody to prophesy. Who's going to prophesy? Who's going to prophesy? So what? Who's going to prophesy? Stand up there. Who's going to prophesy now? Yeah. Look, somebody got to stand up. Who said? Yeah. Why? She's she was the chosen. Why is she standing up? Because she was chosen. Why is she standing up? I told her to. <laughs> That's why she's standing up. <laughs> now, if the Holy Spirit is there, now, if the Holy Spirit gives the gifts, if he wants somebody to prophesy, what are you going to do? Is he going to touch somebody? Yeah. Is he going to touch everybody? No. Why not? Because it's not Wait, you in this You didn't say you won't pay attention. You didn't get the key. You didn't get the key. You didn't have no argument? No, that's not. 
<laughs> y'all know, y'all know the sound, y'all know the routine. Yeah, that's the first one. You can hear that key. Or you didn't hear somebody say, I feel the spirit moving in this place. Yeah, right. That's a catch, that's, that's a key. See, you've been trained. Yeah. I feel like going on out in the spirit now. Yeah, What that mean? Get ready to come. Get ready to come, boy. Let's get ready to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. There you go. They're trained. Yeah. I'm speaking to Yeah, boy. If the Holy Spirit gives the gift, He ignites it, why do I have to say anything? Man, wow. Because what do you have to do with that side I want to write a letter? You didn't know I was going to write one, did you? How did you know I was going to write one? <laughs> you told us. What I told him, I told y'all he better do, right? Yeah. What did God say? Hey. He won't do nothing. Unless. Unless he lets his people know. Yeah. What did you better do? Hey. I'm going to use you today, Devon. Oh, man. Don't <laughs> <laughs> <Okay, okay. laughs> worry about what you want to say. Just be ready. Yeah. I'll speak through you. Yeah. And then what he said? Yeah. Why do you need a, a certain key on the organ? Like we was praising a while ago. Yeah. See, the keyboard would have kicked in, but y'all got a little yeah. juicy. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got a little juicy, but y'all was good praising God. Yeah. The keyboard would have kicked in. Like, <laughs> Let's keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Don't stop. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Everybody's up in the They have a good time in the Lord, man. Yeah. Which Lord? <laughs> yeah, it might be the Lord of Flies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> My God, I don't need your help. No, Is he weak? He's sleeping there. He's on vacation. It's Memorial Day, you know. Memorial yeah. weekend, right? Yeah. See, we get our reasoning and our intellect. When you say you're created in the image and likeness of God, it's in your reasoning and your intellect that you're supposed to think like God. See, the born again believer in his reason and intellect, will and emotions start to think like God and to reestablish in God's character. That's the word of God. You are created in the image and likeness of God. What happened at the fall? Because man gave in to his human nature, he became slave to his emotions. And I really bet you go to the Nazareth Center of those churches and really get somebody off and talk to them one on one. Most of them tell you they fake because they want to fit in. Yeah, that's yep. it. Absolutely. That's it. They call it out with everybody else. Everybody else falls down. They're speaking that Jewish book. Everybody else speaking. Yep. They went home and learned their dance move because everybody else got it. Yep. And they're trying to be unique in their madness. Mm -hmm. But this is the thing. Why I'm so happy. A brother was sharing with me yesterday that he's had to make some decisions. And he ran across this person that was sharing with the person. Then this Christian that's trying to prove that they know God saw the young lady walking on the crutch. Told the lady, don't you know your faith in God can heal you? Wow. She said, like what you said. She said, well, look, I'm looking for help. You trying to say you can pray for me and heal me? Wow. Total silence. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man. See, that's why I'm happy. Because she would have asked, she would have, if I had heard that, I said, you know what? This is why I make the decisions that I make. See, because when you approach me and ask me something like that, I know I got the power to pray and heal you. Yeah. That's why I'm so excited. That's the proof that what I do is real. Because I know I don't have to prove no more. I know that if you believe that I'm a child of God, yeah. oh, man, that's God. it. You believe that I have the power to pray for you and yes. you can be healed or delivered. I know without a doubt you will be That's healed it. and delivered from whatever it is. And I'll be willing to be put on the spot any place, any time. That's it. That's what I know. That's why I don't fall for this foolishness. Because you have a form of godliness, but no power. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. All these places you see this foolishness going on, ain't nobody got no power to hold the tongue in place. Somebody pull out in front of you. They in the vehicle can't hear you. And you go on to curse them out like they can hear you. Yeah. Now that's what I call powers. Yeah. You can't control a thought. Amen. You can't keep your word to yourself. 
Uh-huh. You can't do nothing before 30 seconds. Are you hearing me? See, this is why I'm excited. Because my God, through following His Word, empowers those that follow Him. See, we don't have to be having a big chain. We don't have to have a thousand members. Amen. But if you roll up on me anywhere at 24 7, and you got a problem that you can't be delivered from, and solving that problem will benefit the kingdom of God, <laughs> my dad is John on the spot to set you free. Why? Because he want to prove to you, number one, that I'm his child. Number two, that you can come to him with whatever you need, and he'll set you free. And who's bold enough to stand up for that God in public and say, Amen. That's it. You roll up at Walmart, I don't care where you're at. Somebody roll up on you, talking about all oh, these Christians, they ain't got no Bobby Good. Well, I got a little Bobby if you really need some. Yeah. What you need? My first question how is that going to benefit the kingdom now? Mm-hmm. How is your mama living going to benefit the kingdom? Yeah. Why do you want your mama to live? Mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to. Well, how is it going to benefit the kingdom? Because you sound selfish right now. Yeah. Daddy ain't gonna fill out no selfish prayer, no selfish prayers. How is your mother living? It's gonna benefit the kingdom of God. You better have an answer. You won't be living. Yeah. Amen. See, these things you gotta think about. How are the people in your life benefiting you in the kingdom of God? Amen. Are they benefiting your life for positive growth and development that glorifies God? Or are they taking you down some crazy rabbit trail? Mm-hmm. God ain't gonna ask nothing gonna take you down a rabbit trail. Amen. He wants you to know that he's real. And he wants you to know that if he heal you or do what you want, that you can be available to him. Yeah. Yeah. You see those people that do it? They come up and do a big favor. I'm like, no, I'll come back. I'll come back to you later on. Somewhere down the road in life, I'm going to have to come yeah. back to you and call them on that thing I just did for you. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> this is the God we serve. Yeah. Why? Because we created in his image and his likeness. Amen. That's it. See, Jesus didn't die for me. Don't get, don't get, don't get excited. Yeah. He died for Adam. Amen. See, he and Adam's birth was like mine and his ain't. Yeah. I had a Robert Palmer and a Margaret that's the hard one to get together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Amen. She became Margaret Palmer. Yes. Then I came along. Yeah. Are you hearing me? See, Jesus and Adam were born alike. Yeah. See, when God was in the garden before he created anybody, he had to find something to use. He picked up some dirt. Yeah. I could use that. Because I'm God. He said he took that dirt and he formed it. And how he thought a man, like he wanted a man to look. Just like in the coffin, look just like the coffin person. Yeah. Hard and stiff. Yeah. Some people say they look so peaceful. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. They get like clay to me. Yeah. Expressionless. <laughs> Unless they stuck a smile on their face. Yeah. So I'm not sure she could do that. <laughs> but anyway, back to the story. Yeah. So he took that hunk of clay yeah. and he said he breathed into his nostrils. Mm-hmm. The breath. Yeah. The word that means life. Yeah. And it said he became a living soul. Mm-hmm. Woo! Jesus Christ. God's good. There it came to life. Yes. Then there was this guy. This was messed up. He was the mold for everybody. God had great plans for him. But there was this person called the devil that had plans too. Because he didn't even belong that kicked out of heaven, you know. Because he said he wanted to be like God. You know how we do. See, he didn't know he didn't have enough knowledge. See, because all this destiny stuff you see going on wasn't the same plan. His stuff, his stuff was going to look just like God's. That's what happened when you have limited knowledge. He didn't know that separating from God would make his stuff exactly opposite of God. Satan works too hard to make you believe he does not exist. He didn't want all this killing to go on and all this stuff going on because now he's been exposed. He ain't about that. But anyway, he messed up. But whatever caused Satan to get off track, when I finish this plan, that'll never happen again. He said, I gotta fix this. So he said, okay, I gotta pray. I'm gonna call him Jesus. Now he's gonna be my second Adam, because the first one messed up. Not my second Curtis. Not my second T. Not my second Ben. He died from what Adam did. He just got thrown in there. Which is part of the plan. So he called him Jesus. Well, then one day, this virgin girl was out 
mind of business in The angel showed him to us and said, look, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. You have a child. She was a virgin. You know how it works. Except for those that are confused with bathroom, they're supposed to do it. <laughs> but you know how it works, right? <laughs> So he said, look, uh, you got to fix this. Mary, I need you. I need you. See, he touched Mary. I'm going to need you, Mary. All the verses in the world, why? He just chose Mary. Mary knew she had chosen, right? But Mary was shocked. I'm going to do what? You're going to have a child. How could such a thing be, God? I know how that equation works. And I've been saving myself for you, Lord. That's why I called you, Mary. You never know why he wants you to be a virgin. You never know. You might be that next miracle thing. <laughs> Just like, I gotta have this child. She said, I'm more man. It didn't sound like she was interested in one. I'm more man. He said, Mary, don't worry about it. You're talking to God now. And he said, God don't come and touch you again. So he took another piece of dirt called Mary. And he ignited his spirit with that dirt. Just like he did with that. Are you hearing you say the bitch? See, because we all dirt, we clay. He went to Mary. Without no father, no human father. That dirt, because he said, from the dirt you came, where you going? Back, Back to the dirt, right? The scientists did an analysis of what you chemically work, about 79 cents. <laughs> they melt this down and put it back into the original farm thing about 79. I said, maybe a dollar 79, I'm not sure. But anyway, it ain't much. Not as much as you think you were. If your purpose is human nature. Yeah. Yeah. But that thing he put inside you, now that's Christ. That's right. Yes. Amen. That's it. Are you hearing me? That's it. So he united again with some dirt called yeah. Mary. Amen. Out come a son named Jesus. Yeah. We sang about him this moment. He came to enlighten us, yes. to bring us out of darkness. That's why we call this place Day Spring. Amen. From the Day Spring from on high has visited us. Amen. We used to sit in darkness, but now we've seen a marvelous light. Yeah. His name is Jesus, yes. the second Adam. Amen. He came to do everything that the first Adam did. Amen. So everything that Satan brought into the world, Amen. Jesus came to say, look, I brought yes. that out. Amen. And when he heard off, he said, look, as I am in heaven, yes. So are you here in this life? Yes. Can't wait to see what it's like on the other side. Amen. But I will. I will. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But it work needs to be done here, right? Amen. I'm enjoying this power. I like to see how it works, right? Yeah. So he came to undo what Jesus did, what Adam did. And now he's put us in a position <laughs> to reason. And to have a wheel. And to really be smart. Really, really be smart. All right, yeah. Go over to that 90 percent that the world says you ain't able to touch. Amen. If you can do that much damage with 10 percent of your brain, can you imagine what you can do with 90 percent of your brain? Yes. It's untouchable for most people, though. Yeah. Because they fall for the foolishness, mm -hmm. the hype, yeah. and they have no power. Yeah. So he says that all the gifts are manifested by the Holy Spirit, right? Now, if you're not spiritual aware, you're going to miss our lesson today. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. As he deals with this false foolishness that we have going on in the church, right? My God is just, woo! He could have been just a plain and simple. So it would be clear. But that's what they struggle with Jesus with, right? Why don't you just be plain and clear? Tell them what you're trying to say. Jesus always spoke in parables, right? Because he said, those who have ears to hear him. Let them sit here. Yeah. See, everybody calls themselves a child of God don't have ears to hear, no eyes to see. Because yeah. they operate in their emotions. We started last week, verse 20. Brother, do not be children in your thinking, yet in evil be infants, but in your thinking be mature. We, we, we talked about that verse last week, right? Last time we were together. In the law is written by men of strange tongues, and in the lips of strangers I, I will speak to these people. And even so then, they, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. What we're going to pick up today is here. Look, verse 22. So then, tongues are for a sign. That's what it was last week. For a sign. Tongues are for a sign. Real tongues, still in G-U-E-S, 
is a sign not for those who believe, but to unbelievers, the real tongues. But prophecy is for a sign not to unbelievers, but to those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church assembles together and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or believers enter, will they not say that they are mad? He says, if you come into a church and all of them are speaking different languages, you got Italian going on, French, Spanish, and then everything going on right at one time. Could you imagine such a that? I'm struggling with a lot of the English he bothers here. And you throw these other things. He said, won't they think you're mad? What's the point? Who did he speak those things? Anyway, he says, listen, Therefore, all whole church assembles together and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or unbelievers enter. Will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, speak a word of God, and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by how he is called to account by all, the secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. See, the thing we have to understand is that now he's giving us some instruction, right? And you've got to keep in mind, how are the gifts manifested? So when you look at this first verse through 21, you find that the tongues has no purpose in the church. When you look at those verses, tongues has no purpose in the church. Because tongues is a sign for who? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. The church is for? Believers. Believers. Now, an unbeliever comes in here that doesn't speak our language, we would need tongues then, right? Will a Spanish speaking person come in? Now, this is the thing we shared before, right? So many places that I know they say they have the gift of tongues, right? But when they have different language speaking people come in, they have to have a second service for them and have someone that speaks their language to give them a sermon. But everybody in the church speaks in tongues. They say, when you use reasoning, you got to tell me all y'all speak in tongues. You got some Hispanic people in your church now. You got to have a second service for them so somebody can preach the service in their language. Why would you need to, why do you have to give the tongue if you can't speak to them in their language? That's what Acts was, right? Reasoning. The word is dialect. means languages. The L-A-N-G-U-E-S. T-O-N-G-U-E-S tongues. It's like language in the book of Acts, right? So we're talking about reasoning, using your intellect with God. So tongues has no purpose in the church. So if tongues has no purpose in the church, where would tongues most likely be used? Outside where the unbelievers. Let's say you were in El Salvador. You don't speak the language. And you run across somebody that needs the word of God. Corey had a person from El Salvador this week with him. Didn't speak English that well. He and Corey figured out how to communicate. But we didn't have the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to work. But when he picked the children up from school, when he come back to the vehicle, they out having a Spanish, a, a language, speaking to the guy, and he's all excited in his own language. <laughs> it was a type of what we're talking about, right? And he thought that was something in it. I heard they was joking and he was just joking with them. They can't joke with you. You can't speak your language. You got to joke with the same thing, right? And they can't get it. But they was like, the kids was in the back. They were just, I heard, now this is your say. I trust my source, though. That they were back there just talking in his language. And he was, he was now free to joke and cut cracks with them because he felt comfortable. Because when you don't know the language, you got to work to get like, what is this? What is this? What is this? Now, I don't know how, I, and I got to work to make sure he understands what I'm saying. You ain't really enjoying the conversation you're working too hard. <laughs> but when you can keep back and relax, and you know, like, oh, man, oh, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, oh, you right. throw funny at me. Yeah. Oh, look at you. You throw funny back, right? Yeah. You ever try to throw a funny at somebody that didn't get it? Yeah. Mess the whole thing up, though. Ah, uh, I know. If I got to repeat it, it loses yeah. all of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, my. <laughs> Then you feel stupid, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> it don't sound funny after you have to repeat yeah, it, right? Have to repeat it's that little That's shock, true. that first moment. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Okay. So he felt comfortable. That's the whole point. Yeah. The work of God is to make the people that come to God feel comfortable. Yeah. To feel apart. Yeah. Not have to work hard and wonder did they get it. Mm -hmm. 
Doing has no purpose in the church because what is the purpose it's supposed to accomplish? It is supposed to help speak people that don't speak your language, that are unsaved, hear the gospel clearly. Now, they're about to born again, and we all speak the same language. Why would we need tongues? How come everybody? That's another story. Tongues have no purpose in the church. According to the word of God, we're not trying to say what is it. We're trying to say, I know what the original look like. Yeah. You told me what the original look like, I can pick out a phone. Mm -hmm. That's the key. The enemy got too many professing believers learning the counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And they never get to know the original. Yes. Yeah. And so when you put the original before, it looks like foolishness. And it's hard for them to overcome yeah. because too many popular, persuasive, influential people are behind the madness. Yeah. And you become intimidated because you ain't studying your Bible. I got to tell somebody over there. Hey, man. Hey, go ahead. And I read it. I got my mind on some of the other stuff. I can't understand it. Yeah. Hey. And so that's what's happening. So tongues has no purpose in the church. Acts 2-7 talks about how they were all astonished when they heard the people speaking in their language, right? So let's go down uh, to number 26. Acts 2, 7 and 26. Because we're talking about observation of tongues, tongue, T-O-N-G-U-E. It empowers the spirit of self-promotion. Look at verse 26. He says, in Acts chapter 14, First Corinthians 14, 26, he says, What is the outcome of it? Brother, and he's talking about speaking in tongues, what they've been doing. He said, what is the outcome then? When you assemble, each one has a song, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Now this is the key right here. If you don't really understand how God works, you will think God is getting ready to give you some instructions on how to speak in tongues. We just determine how the gifts work, right? How do the gifts work? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit touches whomever He wants to use to do whatever He wants to do, right? If that be the truth, what role do you play in again? Yeah. Other than what you're being used, right? Amen. See, this is where revelation comes in. Amen. Which people that have this foolish, they're constantly talking about revelation, right? Revelation, yeah. They have a revelation that overrides the written word. Whenever you, when you have another one of these settings, when you got this foolishness going on, you constantly hear about revelation. I have a revelation. This is what he said. Everybody got a revelation, right? In these settings, everybody's got a word from the Lord today, right? That's why you be in there 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody's got a word. Everybody's got a song. Everybody's got something the Lord and press on them to say, right? Amen. God has just showed us about the gifts. They're manifested by the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit is controlled by how many of you all? How many of y'all tell the Holy Spirit what to do? How many of you try? Does it work? He said, really? Because we learned that a lot of what we want ain't good for us, right? And nobody else. So he said, everybody has a revelation. Everybody has a song. Everybody's got, in other words, it empowers the spirit of self-promotion. Matthew 23, 5 through 7. But they do all their deeds to be noticed by men. For they brought their flatteries and lifted the tassels of their garments. They love the place of honor at banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplace. Sound familiar? Yeah, buddy. Uh, that's Dr. So-and-so. And this, no, it's, it's, it's Bishop Doctor. Yeah. And they will get offended. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Boy, man, I, I preach that word today, didn't I? Yeah, boy. And that was a word today, wasn't it? Yeah, boy. Right. That's all right. Man, that God was moving in this place today. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people said that like they said. Yeah, no, The Lord brought a powerful word there. I just don't understand. I don't know. Yeah, Y'all ain't no word there, right? Man, what you think about that sermon? I was moving one. God was moving that thing one. 
I saw you back there rocking. I said, Lord, the Holy Spirit had a hold on you. Yeah, hell. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> understand what I'm saying. Why am I telling? I'm just telling you to wake up and pay attention to what you observe that actually goes on. Is that really the spirit of Christ? That he brags about himself? He has draws attention to himself. But Jesus was doing all the work. What do you always tell him? Don't tell nobody. Yeah. What you mean don't tell nobody? Yeah. You'll be like, man, let's go tell the world what I'm going to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> So when you go out today, you will see these folks, right? Man. And I want you to listen. Man, the Holy Spirit will move how today, boy. Man. And ask them what they mean. <laughs> Man, sister so-and-so was shouting all over the place. Brother so-and-so was all over the place. Everybody was moved by the Spirit. What do you mean? Everybody was talking to each other today. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we had a good time. What the word? What the heck? What was the word? Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he preached. Yeah, this is what, oh yeah, he preached the word today. What did he say? What was he talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, they don't ask me questions. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. You wait to hear what these are texts and what were they talking about? How did it relate to your life? And how did you take that today? So you go out there, how you go out Man, that's the, the man that saying was off the chart. Yeah. Just pay attention. That's all I'm asking you to pay attention. Don't yeah. say I say I just want you to start paying attention to what you hear. Man, God really blessed that. What do you mean? Man, Johnny got him a brand new car the other day. Yeah. Somebody gave it to him. <laughs> yeah. Amen. No, he got a payment. Yeah. Got a blessing. Yeah. That's called bondage. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like I just paid that car payment two weeks ago. Yeah. Amen. See, anybody can claim that. Yeah. But when you, I go up on you at Walmart, and you say that you got a pain and you hurt. Yes, sir. And, and, and my faith, and I'm looking for help. I'm like, I can help you if you believe I can. Man. When you got the boldness to do that and know what's going to happen, because that person wants you to be healed, not healed. Yes. Because if you don't know God, you can say, if it's God's will. Yeah. If I do that, yeah. you know you want some, but you throw in on the back if it's God's will, because you ain't sure he's going to answer, right? Because too many times he has it, but that's your ace in case it don't, so somebody heard you pray. You say, well, I have a problem with his will. Why would you ask him to do Yeah. Why would you ask him? He said he'd give you your desires, right? Because we're trying to understand why Paul is having this, God is having this lesson, so we can understand the meaning. Now, if the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the gifts, right? Now, I want you to look at what he's telling them over in Acts, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And he's giving them the, the, the so your, your title might have it, order in the church. I call it the secret code of God, right? He said, <coughs> now, if anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or at the most three and each in turn, and one must interpret. What did you just get from that? When he talks about speaking the tongue, what is he telling you? Who has the, who has the authority over them? Yeah. Why do you say that? Look what it says, though. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or at the most three. How do I get to determine how many people speak in tongues? Well, I thought the Holy Spirit initiated. Huh? Yeah. And see, this is what this, this what this is what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. See, most people think here. God is giving you instruction that if you speak in tongues, how to do it. Yeah. Well, because I know how God works. Yeah. The Holy Spirit do it, so I don't determine how many speak. Go ahead. Wow. Man. Say. Hey. You get it? Yeah. Amen. Go ahead. Wow. If the Holy Spirit, he don't already talk to see. It's amazing how the truth will just slip over your yeah. mind. Amen. That's it. Wow. No one talks about, but he's already showed us how the gifts work. Yeah. So we get the first commitment. Now he's telling you. 
If you speak in tongues, now he's, now he's talking about the counterfeit. Yeah. Yeah. And we understand why in a minute. Yeah. If you speak in a tongue, can't no more than two or three do. That means you got to be in charge, right? Because if I see folk do it, what's supposed to happen? I let you know it's out of order, right? Yeah. Who controls the real gift? Holy Spirit. Spirit. Who do you think controls this one, really? <coughs> Thank you. Who? Eight. How old are you, little boy? Eight, Eight years old. <laughs> He's with me. Yeah. <laughs> if Jesus controlled the real one, Guess who controlled the other one? Yeah. Satan, right? Who does Jesus work through? Amen. Who? People, right? Who does Satan work through? Mm -hmm. Who Satan work through? People. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but ain't we in charge of something? No. <laughs> How many of y'all said, I'm grown, I'm going to do what I want to do? <laughs> You hear me? I see, this is the part we miss. If the Holy Spirit guides the true gift, we already realize he touched Mary. Abraham saw the burning bush. He moved on Moses and picked up the stick. Right? Mm -hmm. He said, now, but you, when you speak in tongue, this is your instruction. No more than two or three at a time. And he, he put the hardest one in there. You got to take turns. <laughs> we don't take turns and nothing. We all talk at the same time as one person. Amen. We got time to let them go first. I gotta go first. Yeah, right. If I ain't going first, I'm going with you. Right? The one who talks the loudest gets the attention, right? Yeah, that's it. Now I want you to see what he said. Two or three, take turns. Now, and one must interpret. Okay. It's unknown. Right? You don't know it. But you gotta interpret it. Let us think it. You don't know it. How many of you know the language of sick or wicker? Raise your hand. If you know the language of sick or wicker, raise your hand. Sick or wicker. You know that language, right? So I'm getting ready to speak sick or wicker. Single language. You can even hold your You can have your two. I just spoke the second language. Who can who can challenge me? <laughs> who can challenge who? Who can prove who can say I didn't speak second language? Stand up and prove to me I didn't speak second language. <laughs> no challenges. How are you again? Hey. How can you speak in an unknown language if you don't know it? I just spoke single ear. And if you go out and say the pastor tried to pretend he spoke single ear, you had to be able to prove that he did. <laughs> 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 Well, what does single ear sound like? Yeah. How do you know when you hear it or not? Amen. Reason, <laughs> intellect, from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our own words will tell us the truth. Yeah. Amen. It's unknown. Yeah. <laughs> Un means nobody knows it. That's why they get away with it. Yeah. Because can't nobody prove they didn't speak it. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we, we, we try to go prove something they didn't say? No. I just can prove that the Holy Spirit wasn't behind it. Yeah. That's it. That's all I need to know because the Holy Spirit ain't in it. Yeah. Do I need it? No. Why would I waste my time with something the Holy Spirit ain't about? See, and, and when you don't know God like that, you try to prove to people. Yeah. Then it ain't no such thing. I don't need to prove. I don't need you to stop. I just need to know where I need to hang out. Hang out. Yes. Where I don't need to hang out. Yeah. 
So when I'm at a place and I hear that go on, I just like and get up. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for going on. <laughs> Ain't need me to stop and go by this because he's trying to be funny here. Yeah. Oh, okay, what did you say? Right. I just spoke sick and I said, y'all have a great day in the name of the Lord. Yeah. You can't prove I did You got to trust me now, right? How many people have fallen for that madness? He says, now look, because this is the thing, you ain't in control. Number one, and he's going to give you a destruction control, something that Satan control. Then he goes on and says, listen, let two or three prophets speak, and let the other pass judgment. But if a, rela a revelation is made to another who is seated, the first one must keep silent. See, this is my thing. If I go to a place like that, right, because I want you to stay out of trouble. You go into church, everybody's speaking in tongues. Three or four speaking in tongues. Ain't nobody interpreted, right? Right? And you say, well, look, I don't have to. I, I say, okay. You say you're speaking in tongues. Where do you get that from? Well, they say right here in the book of 1 Corinthians, if you do it, I say, okay, this is, what I'm, this is going to be my question. Are you honoring God according to his instructions when you do this? You hear what I just said? Because all y'all are speaking in tongues. When one started, everybody went off. Nobody's interpreting. So I ain't going to say you're not speaking in tongues. I'm just asking you, are you honoring your God in it? Should be no more than two or three, y'all. You got to each take turn. You just got to be an interpreter. If there ain't no interpreter, you got to be quiet. Are you honoring that? If you ain't honoring your God, then. is he pleased? Reasonably. Reasonably, right? You think you're supposed to worship God on Sunday? And you in hell, all y'all that worship God on Sunday go there. But do you worship on Sunday? When my law comes, where ain't nobody else doing it? But you believe it. Why don't you worship God on Sunday by yourself? See, that's how you take the food in yourself. I'm not going to participate in it with you. Yeah. I just, I'm going to challenge you that if you say this is of God, I'm going to ask yourself, are you honoring God in it? That's all. That's all. Don't want that make common sense? If this is what you say you believe, shouldn't you honor it with your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. It don't care what it is. If, you're supposed to, if you think you're supposed to stand on your head three days a week in the corner, and you do it only one day a week. Are you honoring God like what you say you believe? Is God pleased? No. See, it's an impossible task. Satan is about disorder. You're not going to get order out of disorder. Are you hearing me? He's telling them that we know that the gifts of God are controlled by the Holy Spirit. They are manifested by the Holy Spirit. Why would he in his next breath tell you you got to control it? You got to make sure it works like it's supposed to work. Reason. He's talking about the counterfeit. He's telling them if this is how you're going to roll, this is how it has to be. Then you say you got it. I ain't telling you know, he never told them to stop. He just let them know what the real thing is. Just like in your life. You got to know what the real thing is. You got to know what a real friend is. No matter what they tell you, are your actions honoring the fact that you say you're my friend? Yeah. Are the things you need me to do, are they going to benefit me, or are they going to destroy me? Right. Honor what you say you believe. That's what he's saying. Because he knows you don't have the power to do it. It leads to disorder. 27, everybody got something to say. Everybody got a revelation. And none of it lines up with the word of God. Romans 8, Romans 8 7 to 8. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So when you are speak, so when you are speaking in a tongue, you are outside of the will of God. You're operating from your human nature. You're operating from your emotion. He says the word because I know how God works, there's no way you're going to do anything to please God in that place. You understand? See, this is why we got to get to know God intimately and personally. Like 
all of you have personality. Your close friends that say they're close to you should know you well enough that if somebody comes along and shares something with them about you that's way out of your character, because of how they're going to say, look, I, I don't believe that. I'm not saying they did, but I would have to see it. And I would definitely have to talk to them because if they did this, something was wrong. Because this is not the person I know. Anybody here know anybody like that? If you do raise your hand, you know somebody like that, raise your hand. You know somebody well enough that if somebody come and tell you some off the wall stuff that's totally out their character, you'll be willing to say, no, I, I, I just, I can't believe that. Yeah. Well, then raise your hand, you know what I mean? It's not a trick question or nothing. I just want you to go about, you know, you know people. You get to know people after a while, and you'll know when something is outside their character. Well, we have to get to know God the same way so we can recognize what's of his character and what's not. Well, how can we do that? Because you're created in his image and his likeness. There's a part of you that's just like God regardless of who you are. That's that part deep down inside of you that you have that conversation with. You get ready to do something like, you know that ain't right. You know you can't do that, that's not right. You know you shouldn't do that. But because of your weakness, or your greater love for yourself, and your passions, and your desires, it gets overridden a lot of times. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm sure some of us have done that, experienced that, right? You knew what you was getting ready to do was wrong, but that desire, the Lord will help you new ones, you young people, you keep having your first experiences and everything. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. It's that drive. That's the enemy of human nature is able to connect with. Mm -hmm. And if you would just strengthen your relationship with God, recognize the foolishness and the disorder that's in your life, yeah. and get to know you, yeah. so you will start to recognize when you're getting out of your character. Yeah. When my desk gets junky, and I ain't open the mail, I could. Yeah. Get your stuff together, man. What's going on with you? What's up, man? So what's going on? Come back right. Come out of order. This ain't you right here. Yeah. I got to know me. And I got to know when things are getting ready to go down the wrong road. And I got to gather myself back in. But that's because this is why I'm excited. Because I don't get caught up in that foolishness. I knew y'all said you did it, right? Yeah, I did. But I wanted it. Ain't nothing good about it. At 27, this is all I can say. Man, I did have fun. But so I was like, man, this is not what I had in store for myself, man. I'm 27 now. I ain't got nothing. Yeah. I ain't got nothing to do nothing with. Yeah. I just, yeah. I can't, I don't have nothing to even hold. Oh, yeah. I don't have nothing. Yeah. And I'm about to turn 30. This is not what I had planned. Yeah. And I was like, the only thing I actually can say is that I had fun. Singly. Then I met the Lord at 27. Yeah. Then I realized all I was doing was killing myself slowly yeah. with a smile on my face and yeah. a gun in my head. Yeah. That's it. Understand what I'm saying? Man. Because the enemy doesn't want you to enjoy the life that you want for yourself. And he's programmed you and he's programmed you and set you so you're going to fall for the distraction. Well, this is what God said about all this food, 37 to 38. If anybody think they profit, think you're a prophet, and you think you're spiritual, and you can't agree with this information that he just shared, he says, they're not recognized by God. So all this foolishness that you see going on is not recognized by God. Why? Because it profits nobody anything. There's no power to be delivered from your human nature. We have the power and authority to take authority over those spirits to set you free to walk in that life. But I know you said, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's a problem I'd like to experience and work my way through, right? I understand. I understand. And I'm not going to pray that for you. I'm going to pray that you survive. Survive it for the Lord. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching has both uh, the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him to your house. And do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. That's why we have to make this tough decisions. But that's how we get empowered. 
to make a difference in people's lives against the spirits that are behind our behavior because man has never been in charge. Never has been, never will be. You are a tool or instrument by God or either Savior. That's what I want to leave you with today. I want you to understand that this word is designed for born again believers. And most people think that when they read 1 Corinthians, they talk about order the church, they actually think that God is giving you instruction on how to handle the gifts. There is no such instruction. And this is why this is so powerful. You can influence people to do crazy stuff, but you ain't gonna never influence the Holy Spirit to do something outside the will of God. So whether you want to believe He showed up or not, He just won't show up, whether you believe it or not. And if you, if you do this right here, if you take away all the gibberish that you see, how much tongues would you hear? None. Think about it. <laughs> Next time you hear somebody speaking in tongues, you're like, what language were you speaking in? Here? And there's some Bible that's supported that says this. When Paul was teaching about the tongues, T-O-N-G-E-S, he was referring to the languages that were spoken in the book of Acts. But since the book of Acts, when tongue is used, it is talking about the ecstatic language of angels. And what they're saying is this. Everything that you hear spoken in the church today is actually the language of angels when there's no such thing. And if there is, no man has ever heard it. Because no angel has ever spoken it in the hearing of men. <laughs> you got to think, I mean, think about that. If it was the language of the angels, and they've never used it in your presence, how will you know when you hear it? He was being sarcastic. Yeah. If there was such a thing. Yeah. See, if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, if you don't know God like that, you'll fall for that. Yeah. That's why he says, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And those who have eyes to see, let them see. <clears throat> Unknown. Look it up. Not known. <laughs> Not known. You can't know it. <laughs> you can't know it, you can't speak it. <laughs> and he says this, the spirit of the prophets, are controlled by the prophet. And what do they say when they have all this foolish? The Holy Spirit just took over me. Yeah. He does everything distantly and poor. It's not about the show. Mm -hmm. It's not to prove that you are with God. It is to be used by God when He needs you. Yeah. Are you hearing me? If you understand the language, why you need another language? And that's what we wanted to get across to you today. God nowhere teaches us how to control the Holy Spirit and the work that He does. But how many have thought that He was teaching us how to manage the gifts, especially the gift of tongues, when it was spoken?